Hey everyone, my name is Nancy L.T. Hamilton. Welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be doing three types of flush setting. We're going to do a setting burr, a heart burr, and a ball burr. Uh, lots of information. And also, if you haven't already seen part one of this series, you really should watch that because that has all the information uh, about measuring your stone, layout, uh, what types of stone to use, the tools to use. A whole bunch of stuff that will really prepare you for actually being successful in doing this setting so get on that then come on back and uh, I'll meet you at the bench all right here we go we're gonna start with the setting burr setting the beginning part of all three of these settings are almost exactly the same the only difference is how you put the stone in and what burr you drill it with. So what I've done is I only had one true edge on this metal. Um, that's something that's really important if you're going to lay out on a square or rectangular piece. Make sure that your edges are perfectly square. I have a video on that, of course. I'll try to remember to put a link in. And um, so I had one square straight edge. So I dragged my dividers down. I made my first mark. I decided to set these at five millimeters apart. I then immediately tapped one in the wrong place <laughs> just because, but that will disappear. And then I went in with a little Sharpie and after I divoted these and so I can see them a little better. So that was the first step on this. We're going to be using a three millimeter stone for the setting burr. Next step is to open up our um, divots and I'm using a 0.8 ball burr for this. I'm going to go ahead and do all three. So I'll probably just show you one. Make sure I put it in the right divot. See that middle finger? That middle finger is very important. Keeps this thing from skittering. So you want to make sure that you brace it. It also helps to keep it perpendicular. Almost there. Ah, we're through finally. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and drill the other two so you don't have to watch that and fall asleep. And then I'll be back. Sometimes I just kind of pull the tip like that to remove any uh, metal filings. Oh, by the way, there's Auto Fry sells this little brass brush. It's great for your small files, like your escapement files and, and uh, needle files, but it also helps to clean off burrs. So check it out. Thought I'd mention that you can also use a drill bit for this. You don't have to use a ball burr. The reason I use the ball burr is because they're cheaper. A lot cheaper less than a dollar a piece whereas the uh, drill bits for my 332nd inch flex shaft are expensive four or five dollars a piece and these drill just as well and I frankly think they catch better than a drill bit does now I'm moving to a 1.5 millimeter ball burr which is a proc which is half my stone This goes a lot quicker because you've already pre-drilled. And the next burr we're going to use is 2.7 millimeter bud burr. Bud burrs have that tapered shape, which helps to keep you from drilling all the way through. Although you, you, if you do happen to do that, make sure you repeat it on all the others uh, because this is still smaller than the setting burr, so the stone will stay in. So once again, the same position. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill down until half the widest part of the ball burr. These are really aggressive burrs and they remove metal quickly, which is why you want to use it. Your setting burr has 
way more teeth. It's a much more expensive burr. It's not really for removing tons of metal. It's just for shaping. It does remove metal too, but not like, not like this. But or a flame burr, another kind you can use. Let's double check again. Yeah, that's about at the right place. So now I'm going to take my toothbrush and continually clean these openings out so I don't get a lot of schmutz built up in there. Okay, and now for our final burr. Let's lubricate constantly. And I want to get back in my position here. And I want to try to keep it as perpendicular as possible. I've also got other fingers. You see them over there pushing down on the vise so that I can keep this as level as possible. With this type of setting, if your stone doesn't sit properly, one of the first things you should check is that your seat that you've cut is lined up. Often when you're first starting out, you tend to hold the burr a little sideways and uh, that can create an uneven sitting. A little chittering going on there and that leaves grooves in the sides. Sometimes it's because you switch burrs, the size changes too much. Sometimes you're not going fast enough. Sometimes it's not lubricated enough. Sometimes I think it's the metal on one piece. I had one section that chittered and the other section didn't. Everything else looked pretty dang similar to me. Check our stone. You want to start checking when it's a little more than halfway. You know, like around here. Okay, let's see how this fits. Getting closer. See that? That's getting there. We're almost down to the girdle. And we're going back in. So my burr is almost buried. It's, I don't know, I would say seven eighths of the way in there. And let's uh, see how this stone fits. You might want to use your loop at this point because this is a really important phase. And it's down, you can see that little rim of metal around it. That's what's going to hold our um, furniture. It's going to fit in that little groove there so it doesn't slide off. See all this crud in the back? We have to deal with that before we set the stone. When you're doing a whole bunch of them, you kind of get to know where on your uh, burr you should stop. It's easier to do like all one size at one time to, to develop that. So you can't see the top of that stone. So that's a excel an excellent depth. It's not too deep and it's just the edge of the metal here. Before I get too excited and set that stone, I have to remember to come back in with my setting burr that I still have in from setting the stone and put a little bevel on the out backside. Clean it out again and then go ahead and put the stone in and on to the burnishing. Um, it's going to be difficult to show this process. I'm going to kind of try to talk through it a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in at a 45 degree angle with the tip of the burnisher literally on the stone. And what we're doing is we're pushing downwards towards the center of the stone. And we'll, uh, this is bulging the metal over the top of the stone just a little bit. When we're done, we're going to burnish it straight up and down. So you start this just like you would with a bezel where you're going to go north, south, east, west. I like to keep somebody on here, one fingernail, to keep the stone from moving up. And so I'm going to hold it like this to a couple of hard, I mean, us older women have a little tough, maybe us older men, who knows, but <laughs> it's harder to push down because your hands can lose strength sometimes as you age. Definitely have that going on. So I just did north, south, and now I'm gonna do east. Now I'm going to try to zoom in on this. I don't know if I can go any farther. Let's try it with the loop. 
You see that shiny little rim there? That's what you want to see. So once you've done north, south, east, west, you can just swing it around, continue to push. But more wider, smoother arcs. You want to polish that internal wall. You're burnishing it. Helps to reflect the light onto the stone, makes the stone look bigger. It's a win-win. Next, you want to pop it out, and then you want to see if you can actually push the stone out from the back. If it doesn't wiggle and it doesn't come out, you're really happy, and you're good to go. Of course, the more you do this, the you probably don't have to check after a while. You know your own strength, and you know what you can pull off. Now, I'm going to use the burnisher at a 90 degree angle. I'm pushing outwards, trying to polish that internal wall. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but yeah, it's easy to see with the burnisher in there actually. But you can see that shiny wall there. And you can clean this top up. Your stone is down below and you can do your finish. Plus your stone is probably harder than your finishing tools. You check the Mohs hardness on it, but you can see this dark rim here. That, that means that this lip right here is higher than this. So I need to finish that until this is all beautiful. And obviously these intentional scratches would have been removed by now. I talk about that a little bit next. Um, I want to talk briefly about do a mess up here with one of these. Let's say you ran that line out like that, you slipped. Part of the reason, and this happened in my class recently, is they were afraid to put the burnisher over the stone on the stone, and they weren't grabbing onto that lip with the burnisher tip, and they were slipping out. So if you do that, and you've got a pretty deep one, you can burnish the scratch first, and if that's not good enough, you can do another burnish on it and then do more sandpaper or sanding discs on it or a silicone point anything like that the burnishing pushes the metal back into where the groove is so thought i'd mention that here are a couple of troubleshooting uh, tips for you if the stone is too low, which is like you don't want to do, you can file down the top of it, especially if it's just a one stone a one stone setting. You can take that higher area down to where the stone is seated at the right position. Worst case scenario, if you can pull it off, is maybe solder a tiny jump ring in and recut the seat. If your setting is too high, that's an easy fix. Just continue cutting until the table sits flush. If you slip and scratch the metal, do what I explained before. Use a burnisher and then abrasives to clean it up. If you forgot to remove, remove the burrs on the back side over here, then you may need to get a graver like an onglet and remove it with the graver. Be very careful. If you don't know how to use gravers, please research that ahead of time. Very, very easy to really badly injure yourself with these very sharp tools. Uh, if your graver, your burnisher is slipping, ensure that the uh, burnisher fits into the groove and you can do what I'm doing right here with the camera and just zoom in on your work and see how your burnisher sits in there. You know, if you take a, a big burnisher, where's a big burnisher? Let's find a big burnisher. This is not going to sit as well in there as this. You want to catch that groove that, that is present because the stone is set down in the metal. That's one of the reasons you want to set it below, is that you've got a rim that holds onto your burnisher with. Uh, and lastly, at least for now, <laughs> if 
you are having problems burnishing and you keep slipping out, take a look at the end of your burnisher and make sure that it's rounded, that there's a gradual, um, you know, slope to it, shape to it, and that your tip is rounded and that it's polished. These things after use occasionally need to be cleaned up again. So don't forget to do that too. Clean your burrs with your toothbrush and I'm done, I think, with this part. <laughs> video is all done you did it congratulations i'm really proud of you um, don't forget you can always come back here and check me out again if you forgot i would recommend going ahead right now and setting 10 flush set stones at least maybe do another set tomorrow and that'll help create a path in your brain to your hands and you will be much better and remember more so it's all about the brain train not the kind that goes choo-choo. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for coming. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on the notifications, and visit my website, nancyltheamilton.com. Metal smithing from A to Z. Talk to you later. Ciao.